let's get started. Welcome to number three of No Problems, Only Possibilities. And um, this week's uh, access consciousness tool is um, who the bleep does this belong to? Um, and I, I jokingly put that in there because the bleep is often the thing where, you, where you're having a bad hair day and it's like, yeah, who the bleep does this belong to? Um, and I say that with a little intensity. Sometimes that's what's required to get you out of that poor, poor, pitiful me. And I guess um, I give you a little bit of insight on uh, how I came across this tool. So when I was first um, uh, first come, came in contact with Access, um, I took this tool, uh, which I learned at a, uh, at a bar session, who does this belong to? And I started to apply it to every time that a disease um, symptom came up in my body because I had created uh, an incurable disease um, in my bowel and there were a lot of emotions around it. There were a lot of thoughts around it and there were a lot of feelings stuck in the, in the body around it. So every time a thought, feeling or emotion came up regarding um, some aspect of that disease and, it, and it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever had something in your reality where it's so obsessive you can't think of anything else, but that's what, that's what uh, having an incurable disease was like for me. So everything was, everything was designed around the disease. There was, no, there was no me. And so every thought, feeling and emotion was always about, about the disease. And as I started to ask that question, who does this belong to for every thought, feeling and emotion that came up, I started to recognize that a lot of the thoughts, feelings and emotions I was having were not mine, that I was a lot more OCD, that's obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> um, uh, than I'd ever possibly imagined. And I was picking up everybody who was in a similar circumstance as me, including all of the carers and all of the doctors and all of the nurses and all of their projections and all of their expectations, separations and judgments. And I thought it was all mine. So this tool, who does it belong to is such a great tool because it takes care of 98% of our thoughts, feelings and emotions. Now, what I have found is that when we start off with this tool, we're often we're often told that it's 98% of our thoughts, feelings, and emotions are not ours. And then I, a lot of people start going looking for the 2% that is theirs. So instead of just flicking off 98% of the shit, they want to hold on to the 2% that they've made significant or real for them. What if this tool was not about making the 2% that you've bought as real significant, but rather just like cleaning the dust off that diamond called you, you know, cleaning the shit off the top of it so you can start to shine brightly. And then, and then when you actually start to have the awareness that none of that is actually yours, it's actually your awareness on steroids, then anywhere where you've made anything significant then you'll be ready with a whole bunch of new tools from access to deal with that significance. So everywhere where you've been trying to look for the 2% that you've decided is yours, would you now be willing to give that all up to whatever deity will take it and destroy and uncreate it all? Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, eye, short, boys and beyonds. Cool. So for me, I mean, each facilitator, each person that has ever come across this tool uses it in, a, uses it in the same way, but with, it, with their own flavor. So I'm just going to give you my flavor. It's not, it, it's sort of like chocolate with um, peppermint, mint, crunchy bits in it. 
that's my flavor um but don't buy it as yours find your own i'm just giving you this so you can see that different people use it in different ways and so for me when i was really in the intensity of something it would be like who that who does this belong to who that bleep does this belong to who does it 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 belong to return it to sender return to sender return to sender return to sender with all consciously the universe attached and um you know like if if you're sitting on the toilet and you literally that the blood is just flowing out of you and some of you might know that with um you know like with really bad period flows or maybe a disease like i created or whatever it is for you, you know, that, that intensity of thought, feeling and emotion comes up. So I match that intensity with who does it belong to? Who does it belong to? And I'm, and I'm choosing to change this. So the, this tool, who does it belong to? And return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached is actually part of the choice that you have to make to choose to change to choose to make the change that you have been resisting. So everywhere where you have not yet chosen that, can we now destroy and uncreate it all? Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, eye, shop, boys, Indians. And what have you made so vital, valuable, and real about not choosing the joy of you and everything that is, will you now destroy and uncreate it all? Good, bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, iron, short, boys and beyonds. The, the, the one thing in this reality is that if you are joyful, if you are happy um, in any circumstance, um, people will try to tear you down because this reality is, not design, is totally not designed to be, to be happy. 100% of the time is how many of you have heard the thing like, Oh, it will never last. You know, not like the money will never last. Your happiness will never la last. Um, or that you were told when you were a kid, like, uh, it will end in tears, you know, like, and you're having so much joy bashing the hell out of your brother or your sister or whatever. It will end in tears. And of course, your point of view and the point of view that you buy that's projected at you will create, if you buy it as real, will create your reality. And so this reality is always designed to take the joy and crush it. Take the joy of you and crush it so that you can be controlled and controlled, not in a good way, but in a way that keeps you from ever being the joy that you be and the more happy that you be the more conscious con the more consciously that you choose that the less and less people can control it now i had a i had one of those moments this morning where it was like oh cute not bright but years ago i started creating um my life from a much more joyful space and my business went from uh yeah taking care of daily requirements to i can now afford business class with total ease and not even bat, a lot, bat an eyelid to to choosing that every time and i went wow this is so cool and then one of my clients became a facilitator and she actually started to create such um uh doubt and angst in my reality because she she started to create this place where um she rejected me and separated from me and started to bow bad mouth me and all i wanted to do was to have everything out in the open and everything to be lovey and dovey and everything to be okay and i wasn't willing to see what she was really up to and this morning i just got the awareness two years later how does it get any better than that and so so this whole reality is set up so that it will always bring you back down bring you back down to to doubting you 
bring you back down so you can be controlled so that you won't make any waves for anybody else. So everywhere where you've given up you in favour for the pain and suffering and misery that is projected at you on a daily basis, would you now be willing to return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached? Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, eyes, short, boys and yours. And notice how, notice how your mouth suddenly went and you smiled when, you said, when I said return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached. That's because it's not yours. All of that pain and suffering and misery is a projection at you. It's, or it's a projection at you that you have bought as real and now you feel it within your body. And then you create from that space. When you create from that space of pain, suffering, glory, is it no wonder that our businesses, that our relationships can only stay within a maintainable a controllable box and then there's no room to expand your consciousness or or your creative capacities and juices so if you're having one of those bad hair days well there's a lot of thoughts feelings and emotions i know it's a dull boring tool that's that's, that's taught right from the word go it's given for free in just about every anywhere that you can find access but if you, go, if you go back to it, you'll start to perceive just how powerful that is. And it's a reminder. And that little bit, return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached. When you, when you get to that point where that smile comes back, you know it's gone. It's not yours. And you, that's when you can start to create from the expanded space that you truly be. So everywhere where you've bought the point of view, uh, everywhere where you've bought everybody's projections and expectations um, that your happiness can't last 24-7, your joy will always be diminished at some point, or that you must be on drugs if you're that happy all the time, will you now return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached? Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, I shot, boys and beyonds. Just return it to sender, return it to sender, return it to sender, return it to sender with all the consciousness or daggers if you like. No, that's just my joke. But with all the consciousness of the universe attached. Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, corn, I shot, boys and beyonds. Because consciousness is this thing, it's... it's it's so much bigger than us. So when we're actually giving that, when we're returning it with consciousness attached, they then get the possibility of perceiving where they're getting stuck. Now, the more, more and more people that are perceiving and choosing, actually perceiving and choosing consciousness, the more and more the, the, this reality will start to dissolve, diminish and not have any hold over us we might never get rid of this reality and that doesn't matter so how many of you have decided that i'm gonna change this reality rather than choose consciousness because the choice to choose consciousness will be the thing that will take you beyond this reality so everywhere where you've been trying to change this reality, change this reality, you see it with things like Greenpeace. We're going to change the reality of the environment, but what it just does is create more friction. We're going to save the whales, and then by in doing that, we're going to fight against the people that are whaling. And all that does is create more fight. You can't create more peace and more ease and more joy if you're if you're fighting against something or defending for your point of view so when we choose consciousness it's like you can have a completely different conversation with the whales you can have a completely different conversation with with the environment you can actually start to ask what the environment um would re requires or desires you, and have a look at the the trees. It, it's like here where I am in New Zealand at the moment, 
there are just thousands and thousands of acres of um, pine trees that are grown with the agenda that they're going to be cut down and used as um, paper or pulped up or um, you know building materials. Now if we actually were uh, now we could actually go into the wrongness of that and how it's destroying the environment and it's not a contribution to the native fauna and flora and blah, 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 blah. But what if we take a walk in, the, in that nature, in those, in those acres and acres of trees <coughs> that are not even native to this environment and then start to ask, okay, what can I contribute here? What energies can I be here? and lower our barriers, lower our points of view, which are really just things that we've bought from other people and receive what is there. And then, you know, some of those trees actually are growing because they would like to be used as timber. They want to give that to us. Um, and so you'll start to perceive a totally different reality opening up for you, one of which is about the contribution, about gifting and receiving, and receiving means that you have no point of view about it. You have no judgment to stop you from receiving. Anywhere where you have a judgment, anywhere where you have a judgment about you, cuts off, cuts you, cuts off your willingness to receive a different possibility. So every time that you have one of those poor, pitiful me days, that's where you start to cut off your willingness to receive the, the brilliance that you can be in the world. And that will affect your business flows, your relationships, your money flows, your communication with people, what's going on with your body. Um, and all of that sort of jazz. So just this little tool, who does this belong to, will start to unlock all of that for you. Now, what we recommend in Access is to do it for three, if you haven't done this, like you might like to consider making a commitment to yourself to do it for three days in a row. Not one day now, one day in 20 years time, and another day just before you die, but actually do it three days in a row and maybe even get that app. It's a great little app called um, the Access Consciousness app. You won't find it under who does it belong to in the app store. It's called Ac the Access Consciousness app. Download that and you can set a timer to go off every 10 minutes, every hour or whatever to remind you to ask that question, who does this belong to? Um, you don't have to, I've used it, I've used it a couple of times. Um, for me, it's like every time that I've used that tool for three days in a row, things come up like, oh, I'm so shit, I can't even remember to use this tool. Now that that is actually a thought with a feeling attached to it and an emotion attached to it. And it's designed to, that thought, feeling and emotion is designed to lock me back into the wrongness of me so that I can be controlled. Hey, that's when to use. Who does that belong to? Yeah. And then return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached. And it's that easy. What if every time that you remember, every, how many of you have gone, damn, I forgot to close the door, or damn, I forgot to do this, or damn, I forgot to sign those papers. What if that's actually your awareness saying, hey, you haven't signed those papers? Oh, oh yeah. And instead of going into the wrongness of it, you go, oh, who does that? Oh, I forgot. Wrongness, wrongness, wrongness. And who does that belong to? And return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached. Good and bad, right, wrong, pop, pop, or nine, short boys and beyonds. So if you're new to access and you wonder what that gobbledygook I just said was, check it out on www.theclearingstatement.com. It's just a way of clearing the judgment from your reality. Cool. Now we've got five minutes. So are there any questions from anyone about this tool or anything else that's coming up for you? <clears throat> Mm. 
Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask all you guys um, a, a a personal favor. So it it's like I do that I do this half an hour each week um, for free, um, and I have an agenda with that. Yes, I would like to increase my database so I can talk to more people, so I can get these tools out, and yes, so I can create some money for myself in the future. Um, and but also, I'd really like to invite you guys to share this with other people. So, because every time that these tools go out, like, and somebody picks it up and starts to use it, it creates more lightness in the world. And so, if we had, if we had a hundred million people doing, who does this belong to, for three days in a row. Now you've heard of the butterfly effect, yeah? A butterfly flaps its wings in, in China and you know, a huge and, and and there's a, a hurricane in America. And so if we had a hundred million butterflies flapping their wings saying uh, thinking who does this belong to and return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached, you know, what what sort of hurricane of change would we be creating? something totally incredibly amazing so um, I'm asking you guys just to share this round and, and blah 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 the other thing was I just wanted to share this with you it was really interesting I wasn't aware of this but um, Mao Zedong years ago he he got all of the, the entire Chinese nation to um, kill all the starlings. And what they did was they went out with drums and pots and pans and stuff, and they beat those pots and pans for one day. And the starlings were so tired because it kept them flying all the time um, that they were just dropping out of the sky. Now, if you had, so that was like uh, probably about half a billion people in those days. You know, that's the sort of change that you can create. You can destroy a, an in, entire species of a bird in one day. Can you imagine what half a billion people using tools of access consciousness every day could change? Like for me, I'm getting like, woo, up and down my spine. Yeah, that's exciting. For me, that's, that's, what why we're here to have fun and create more lightness so part of that may be you sharing this with one person today or tomorrow or next year or whenever it is um cool well i'd like to thank everybody for coming along and uh, we'll do another one of these next week i'm not sure about the topic yet um, if anybody has a particular tool that they would like to talk about just flick me uh, an email or pm me on facebook or something and um we'll look at perhaps using that as the tool okay great to see everybody's faces and who does it belong to return it to sender with all the consciousness of the universe attached tm registered trademark <laughs> ciao